Hi everybody and welcome to FM24 and it delights me to be able to say that, that we can get this game going. It's the beta, um, it's the day after release because I'm in Singapore. Uh, I did stay up and play the game and stream it for uh, like three hours from 11 o'clock my, my time till like, I don't know, half one, something like that in the morning. But uh, yes, here we are and we're going to be getting underway with our beta save where we have just been appointed the manager. Of Fiorentina. So yes, today Fiorentina have announced the appointment of Cultured Left Foot as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the inexperienced 37-year-old who is sure to see fa face plenty of questions when he faces the media. Uh, inexperienced in the sense of this, not in the sense of Geisley. Last season, 38 seasons, smashed it. Um, we've gone for the the model with the take a photo thing, and I will say. It's a lot better than what it used to be. I don't think I look that, that hideous. But yeah, let's see. So obviously FM24 brings with it lots of new things that we can do. Um, set piece creators, transfer offers with agents and intermediaries. There's set piece coaches. There's liberos. There's inverted fullbacks. We're going to be looking at all of that in this save. And I'm very, very excited. But uh, as you can see, the club enjoyed their greatest era during the 1960s. I would say... Other than that, it's been pretty shit. Uh, Runners-up in the Europa League in 1990, which back then would have obviously been the UEFA Cup. So, yeah, it's not amazing. We're going to have 7.2 million to try and turn Fiorentina's lucks around in the first season. And a wage budget of just over a million pounds a week as well. Uh, we're playing at Viola Park, state-of-the-art training facilities, superb youth facilities, and above-average youth recruitment which is good. Last season, we finished 8th, and we're entering the Conference League this year, so hopefully we can, you know, pummel whichever English teams are in it, because they're probably going to win. Uh, our starting lineup looks something like this, apparently. Bonaventura, Nico, and Zola, York on the right. Um, Arta, Amanda Dagora in the middle. Milankovic, Mil Milankovic? Milankovic, uh, centre-back next to Mina. Dodo, one of my favourite players, at right back, and Biragi at left back, and Terracino in goal. So it's not, we'll get into it in more depth, obviously, but it's not too bad of a starting lineup, but it's never going to be challenging for Serie A. So they want us to sign high reputation players, play entertaining football, develop players using the club's youth system. Go and check Geisley out. Uh, sign players uh, under the age of 23 for the first team. Okay, that's interesting. Increase commercial and revenue. Sign players to sell for profit. Work within the wage budget. Build a new stadium. Okay. Uh, and become an established Serie A team. I would assume they are already a established Serie A team. Um, yeah, okay. So sign high reputation players is what the supporters want. They also want us to play entertaining football as well. And be competitive against... Juventus, which is an interesting one. Um, not fussed about any of this induction stuff. Did it all on stream. Yes, we'll meet the media. No, we won't have a friendly against our own team. And we'll meet our backroom staff every month. So the aim of the beta save is to take a look at everything new, report bugs if there's anything there, and have some fun. We're here to have some fun. This isn't the main save on the channel. This is the first save to introduce us to FM24. Yes, we'll be probably trying to in implement a libero. Yes, we're probably trying to be checking out the inverted fullback to see how it works. And we're going to be looking into everything new pretty much and see how it see how it works see what little easter eggs are there see if there's other things that you know weren't announced as part of the reveal and see what we can do so uh yeah we'll accept the current vision obviously oh yes syria is weird isn't it the following transfer limits apply to players joining Fiorentina this season. Only the first two non-EU players we signed from abroad who fulfil the following three will be eligible to play for Fiorentina. The player has played at least five matches for his national team in his career, including under-21s if he is under-21. The player has been called up to the national team at least twice during the last season. British players can benefit from special exemptions. The first British player who joins for the season will not be counted as non-EU. However, every such signing thereafter will be considered non-EU. So we can sign one British player who doesn't count as non-EU. Okay, right. We'll do the tactics in a minute. We've got lots of players. Wow, that is a lot of players who are expiring at the end of the season. Um, that seems like something that future Dave can deal with, I think. I don't think we're going to borrow with that just now. Now, obviously, I have a 
penchant for teams wearing purple. It is something I really like. So Fiorentina tick that box. They are a sort of fallen giant. If you think back to the days of the 60s when they were winning everything, even like the late 90s and the early noughties with the like of you know, like Batistuta up front, they were a, a renowned team. And I do feel like they've sort of fallen away. So we're going to see how they get on. Now, one of the big players is Giotano Castrovilli. He is a little bit injury prone. He has got damaged knee cartilage for seven to nine months. So we're probably not going to see too much of him in that first season, which is a shame. Obviously, Sofwan Afrobat, uh, Afrobat? Amrabat is on loan at Man United. So we probably won't be seeing him um, again. I assume they're going to make that a permanent one. And Yeri Mina comes in on a free transfer from uh, from Everton. Yeah, he, he was decent at Everton. I'm pretty sure we're going to utilise him pretty well. A bit reckless at times, but I'm sure he'll be okay. Uh, we'll look at the pre-season stuff before we go. Fiorentina injury list, blah de blah de blah Yeah, I mean... Oh my God, we've got Dodo out as well. Oh, Dodo's out for nine to ten months. Holy crap balls. Okay, we're, we, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a world of pain. Yeah, we're in a world We're in a world of pain. Right, we'll have to sort out what's going on, won't we? Um, I don't need to see the squad induction. We know what we're doing. Uh, you, I, I know what I'm doing so much, I've already imported my view. So there we go. Right, yes, injuries seem to be a bit of an issue. Yeri Mina out for two to four months. Dodo out for nine to ten months. Pirozzi out for eight weeks to three months. Barak out for two months. Castrovilli out for nine months. And Iconi out for two months. Bloody hell, what's going on with the physios? Staff. Skip the staff. In skip go away. Go away. I don't need any of this. Medical team. Right. Cheat uh, head physio. Physiotherapy 18. You're quite good. Head of sport science. Sport science 14. I reckon we can get better than you. Physio. 17. Nanelli. 17. Okay, that's all right. Mazzi. 15. Not too bad. We're, we're dropping down, aren't we? 11. No, you're out of here. Contract. Mutual termination. Don't show me this again. See you later. That was was that you at eleven? Yes, it was. Uh, Petrangeli at twelve. You can probably go as well. Sports science fourteen. Okay, you can stay. I think we can definitely get better than eleven, and I'm going to say we can probably get better than twelve. So we're going to take a risk, and we're going to mutually terminate two of our physios there. Next up, let's go and look at our assistant manager. We have Daniel Nicolini as assistant manager. Yeah, he's not. He's not too bad to start, is he? We'll keep him in. Um, head of Youth Development, Valentino Angelini, who, um, it, again, he looks all right. What's his personality? What's his person? What's, what's his, what's his well, reputation's only two stars, so that's not amazing. Uh, fairly professional. That, you can stay for now. You can stay for now. Marco Savarini. Yep, you look very good as a goalkeeping coach. Is this it? Oh, my God, we've got loads of spaces. We'll go and get some scope. Can coaches in. Ivan Tito as a fitness coach has 15. That's not too bad. Pietero Anvo Vano Campo as a fitness coach has 11. Mm, yeah, no, not sure about that. Marco Chirati, coach, doesn't look too bad. He can stay for now. A head performance analyst has 10 for analyzing data. See you later. Just just coming in, ripping the Fiorentina backroom staffer. Performance analysis, 16 analyzing data. Okay, you're all right. We're not going to get in higher coaches and stuff now. We'll deal with that later on indeed. I just wanted to have a look at what the physios were because the team are falling apart. Right, finances then. 24 million in the bank, 7.28 million transfer budget because me mutually terminating people's contracts comes out of the transfer budget. Uh, and 1.9 million as a wage budget and we are currently spending one, we are currently spending our wage budget. Brilliant, excellent. So there's no room there to bring in players so we're going to have to just adjust that aren't we let's just give ourselves like five million and a roughly 120 ish thousand to spend on wages on that one um obviously no profit and loss this season the balance is looking all right so yeah it's not too bad the club vision looks all right club info here we are so we've got the kits are in i have put the kits in um the captain is benagi in here left back 30 year old doesn't look too bad i'll tell you what he could do he looks like someone that could step in midfield as well just thinking about that before we go. Oh, we've got Bonaventura still here as well. As an attacker for 33. Oh my God, is our squad really old? So we've got 19-year-old Mikel Coyote at right back. He's going to bring a bit of energy to the team. Got a couple of 20-year-olds, but yeah, we've got 33, 33, 32, 33, 30, 28, 28, 28. Yeah, okay, not too bad. Uh, so they said Tarancino in goal is our starting goalkeeper. Now, how does he compare... To someone I know that's on a free transfer. And that man is David De Gea. 
Um, let's have a look to see how they compare. So there he is, Pietrotino Tedacino. Uh, David De Gea is better at shot stopping. He's got worse distribution, but he's better aerially. He's less eccentric. He's not as good as communicating. He's slightly less mentally. He's quicker and he's more physical. Wow, David De Gea is more physical than this guy. He's 33, De Gea's 32. I sort of thinking, oh, to get an accurate graph, David De Gea needs to be scouted further. Interesting. Well, let's... Uh, Let's go and get that done. How do I, how do I scout reports? There we go. That's, I completely forgot. That's how much it affected me not doing any transfers in the Geisley save. I've literally forgotten how to report someone. So any scout can go and scout him for a week, uh, and we'll see what we get. But David De Gea is on my list of potential players to bring in. So, you know, you might scoff at it, but I think he'd suit Italian football reasonably well, to be honest. Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's have a look. Let's have a look at this squad. Far four star, four star. Uh, Nicolas Gonzalez on the wing. Very, very good from Benfica. No, he's not. Did he move? Who's the one who went to Benfica? Anyway, signed from Stuttgart. 19.75 million. He is our key player. We're going to try and get the most um, out of him, to be honest. Avoids using weaker foot and runs with the ball pretty often. So he will be our dribbly boy, seeing what he can do. Uh, three and a half star Milenkovic at centre back. Again, a key player. Wanted by. Bayern and two clubs in Saudi. Good to see that Saudi Arabia are, uh, you know, all around bringing in everyone they possibly can. Uh, Mandragora in holding midfield as a playmaker. Quite like the look of him as well. He's wanted by oh, Paranathorpe. Is that Lazio? I think that's Lazio. Maybe Napoli. One of the two. Um, holding midfield as a playmaker. Passing 15. First touch 14. Teamwork. Vision. Yeah, okay. Don't mind the look of that. Uh, and then we've got Baragi at left back, the 30-year-old who we already looked at. He looks like he's going to be pretty good, to be honest. Uh, first things first, as always, don't show me people that aren't at my club. So it's not a huge squad, is it? There's room for improvement. There's things we can do. Now, Nunzola up front is all about the pace. I've signed him on um, uh, FIFA or EAFC. And uh, he's got pace 16, stamina, strength. Of course, anyone that joined the channel during the Geisley save has never seen me look to go and buy replacement players or bring new people in. So, welcome to the Dave Does Transfers. Uh, yeah, signed from Spezia. He had a decent season last year for Spezia and we've spent £10.25 million pounds on him. Um, Christian Kuame is another one I'm quite excited to use. He looks pretty decent as well. He is wanted by Atalanta, Bologna and Lazio. So, it must be Napoli because Lazio are actually in the game. And, of course, we've got Bracalo as well, another player I'm a big fan of. So it does look like we've got we've got some good options here. We do have some good options. Gino Infantino, who has a name far too similar to the guy that runs uh, FIFA. So, but yeah, we'll see. He's there. He's listed for loan. I think he might get some game time. We'll have to wait and see. On loan, though, we have got Maximim Lopez. Uh, he is on loan from Sassuolo. So he's going to be helping us out in holding midfield slash central midfield to see what's going on there. And we have Arthur as well, who had a... Pretty poor spell at Liverpool, didn't he? Didn't I think? Didn't he move and then pick up a massive injury, um, and didn't play for them at all? But yeah, we've got him. Another playmaking option that we can use as well, which I'm quite excited about. So four centre backs, two right backs, maybe three right backs, three left backs, um, a good range of midfielders. Wingers are good, and two strikers potentially looking to go and strengthen out there as well we've got actually two very young strikers which i quite like the look of now obviously tactics we will be diving into it in a lot more detail this is the part of the game that i absolutely love so we'll be going in and focusing a lot on what the tactics do if you'd like to see me do some tactics videos then let me know down below but mainly i do it as let's play right we get this going and we see what happens um so we've we've come in we we will do the tactics eventually they're saying we'd be good at a gegen press vertical tick attack or fluid counter attack um, but we're going to go in and judge by the players we've got i'll set up a tactic and we'll go through that i'm interested to see so sam doria we've got um oh yeah panathor who is look uh hang on no player interesting to display at this time discuss generating market higher and intermediate offer right okay it just it's just saying what you can do so that's fine um paranathorpe are napoli yes is oshiman wanted by absolutely everybody no he's not interesting okay um so we've got to sign eu based players basically is how i read it um it would be useful if there's something that's like it warns you if you're going to sign someone 
that you can't then register. That would be quite useful in things like Serie A. I always thought they should have done that in the MLS as well to give you like a warning before you confirm a signing to be like, you're going to go over the wage cap or this player won't be able to play because you have too many non-EU players, something like that. But I don't know if that's going to ever really be included. Maybe FM25, who knows? But uh, yeah, we're, it's, it's looking all right, isn't it? Obviously, we'll, when we do tactics, we'll go in and look at the set pieces that are here. Um, but we have to actually create a tactic and go through it. Let's just, for now, let's just go Gagan Press, choose a formation, 4-2-4, fine. That's what they want to play. Set pieces, this is what it looks like at the moment. Now, we'll come in and we'll edit this, but I think it's much, much better. Your input is required to better understand your preferences. I like a hybrid defensive strategy. As the manager I have of my amateur team in, in Singapore, this is what we do. So the biggest area defenders are marks only, whilst the rest will mark individual opponents. Yes. What post do you want players marking whilst defending? I want someone on the near post. Thank you very much. How many players do you like to leave forward? I like to have an options of a counter-attack. And how do you prefer the ball to be delivered from attacking set pieces? Around the penalty spot, front of the penalty area, back of the penalty area i like a mix we're going to start with central is what we're going to go with here and how many players do you want to leave back defending during attacking set piece i think we'll stay pretty balanced let's go balanced um and i do prefer an in swinging corner even though it's sometimes a little bit easier to pick up from the goalkeeper so here we are then this is the new set piece layout um for corners free kicks throw-ins you can do it all in here um and it is pretty good actually it is pretty useful i think it's much better the way they've done it now than what it was before um, and then you can move things around so for example we've got d1 d3 and d2 all here staying back to give us an option so as the like recovery defenders as you can see and then if not needed to defend we've got d3 who stay back if needed so we could move d3 from here into a box threat and then he'll become b1 and on our little map you can see him here that this is what it is and then you can tell him how much of a box threat you want him to be what you want him to do differently you got a4 here again you can say what you want them to do so and then it breaks it down so aerial threats are a's box threats are b's creators are c's and defenders are d's so or people that stay back are d's uh, and then you can have that as routine one you can go in and create a new routine we'll say we want it to be you know um a far post in swinging corner for example and then we can say ah actually what we want is routine one to be used more often and routine two to be used left often um, and then we look at routine two and you can see we've got it going to the back post so it's put two attackers two attackers attacking the far post which is amazing uh because you just could never have that before and then we're going to lurk at the far post you can, so what i like about this is that you can really like really go for this and overload areas in a certain place whereas in the old football manager in fm23 you could just have one person lurking at the back post one person attacking the back post um yeah so we're, we're gonna see we're gonna see how it works we're gonna see how it goes um and then we'll go from there then obviously when you've selected a starting 11 you can come in here review of starting 11 and it actually shows you who's doing what in what order which i think is really good as well um, and the players that aren't on the pitch but you've selected where little bibs is really cute it's really cute but um i'm very excited you can probably tell from my voice that i'm very excited about this and having streamed it for like a couple of hours two and a half hours or something in game the match engine looks so much better i'm very excited by what we can see i don't know why it doesn't remember my auto sizing which is a little bit annoying let's go what we'll do then is if we were in here and then we just went um export this current view as clf fm 24 save okay good right then what we're going to do is custom import view clf 24 load done and hopefully now that fixes that issue of it fitting on screen which it has so far which is good right back to the news yes so we've um mutually contract terminated lots of people's contracts which is good uh we'll go on to the backroom staff in a minute and going to find them as well uh, let's go and have a look at who is interested in moving to us now it's really annoying that it pings all this up but you've got to do it once haven't you in every game uh, so players in range is now what it's called rather than searching players and again i didn't really touch this at all last year so let's see how we go etienne kapua is still playing he's 35 i don't think that's someone i'm that interested in bringing in now we could try uh, an audacious swoop to go and bring home um 
Dusan Vlahovic, but I don't think that's really going to work. But transfer listed players then. Uh, starting with the most expensive is 30 million. Scott McTominay. Wow, okay. I mean, we've only got 5.6 million. Donny van der Beek. Mohamed El Nenny. Pasalic is in there as well. 28. I mean, Donny van der Beek could be a good, could do a good job. Malang Saar from Chelsea. We've got Zeki Selic, who is a um, a player that I used to really like, actually. Zeki Selic. We need sort of we need some squad filler, don't we? We need some squad filler. So I wonder if there's like a slightly potentially like older player that could come in and sort of be a bit of a you know, a bit of an all rounder. Andre Lunin. Isn't he really highly rated? He is transferred for 3.1 million. He's wanted by Al Alin. Okay, so it does look like the Saudi Arabian teams have lots of money. It does look like they have got a lot of money. Andre Franco is another one. There's a lot of people that start transfer listed. And a lot of those transfer listed people are wanted by Saudi Arabian clubs. Sven Ulrich is playing in the Bayern second team. Wow. This is crazy. Who's listed for loan? Maybe you can pick up some really good players in this. Facundo Palestri. Ooh, Sergio Gomez are definitely another one I'd be interested in signing. Potentially. Uh, Matson from Chelsea. Yasin Adli. Well, he used to be a great little signing you could pick up in this save. Uh, Romario Barro from FC Porto. That's interesting. He used to turn into a wonder kid as well. Sorrentino from uh, Brianzana. Cabal. Didn't Cabal used to play for Fiorentina? Nope, I've made that up as well. Maybe there was a Cabal that used to play for Fiorentina. But um, okay, and then you are getting into a bit of a less, less value players. But Facundo Palestri. Could be interested. I could be interested, Man United. You've, uh, you've, you've, you've had a look there. You've, you've got me interested. Right. Let's, let's move forward a day. Right. We're going to go and attend our coach meeting. See if these have changed. Uh, Lucas Martins Otara, Kutara had some slight struggles with first touch dribbling and technique. Uh, 10, 12, 12. Yeah, do it. Get him on ball control. Uh, Nicholas Gonzalez for endurance. Yep, yeah, do that. And uh, Beltran as a striker could do help with his final third training. Yeah, lovely. Oh, look, strongly recommend. Yep, start that training. Not even going to read what it is. Uh, yep, start that. Start that. Fine. Uh, Beltran, get him speaking Italian. I mean, I don't speak Italian. I was learning Italian at one point. Uh, skip to staffing. Here we go. We should give consideration to hiring Gianni Vio for the coaching team. His impressive level of discipline. Set piece coaching, 17. Discipline, 19. Motivating. Yes. Okay. Gianni... Vio, you are an unemployed set piece coach. Oh, not like, skip this. I've played the game before. Set piece coach. Set set piece coach. Two point five k a week. We'll give him a three year contract. He's delighted. He's he's like sign me up. Uh, we could benefit from adding Gianluco Conte to the team. I don't think so. I think we can find better than that. Dida as a goalkeeping coach. One hundred percent. Yes, I'm all about bringing in old world-class players to come and help out Fiorentina. Yes, Dida is in. Um, meeting summary? Excellent. Right, I mean, it was not really that useful, was it? Um, let's go and find another coach. We're going on We're going on vibes. We're going on vibes, people. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, coach. Three grand a week, three years. Bosh, bring him in. And then I'm sort of thinking, if you can, you get one coach with vibes. Do we need another one that's just unbelievably aggressive? Sort of think we do. Um, Roy Keane, assist, can, you, can you be a coach? If we said just come in as a coach to be that really aggressive coach that sh sh scares everyone, into, he doesn't want to be a coach. He's, he's like, no, Dave, I'm a manager. I'm a manager or nothing. Uh, is that Irish? I think that might have been Irish. Uh, we end that meeting. So we've, we've brought in Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Let's go and have a look at staff. Who else is around? Who else is around as a, as a member of staff that we can potentially bring in um i want to add in uh, uh insert column general world reputation who's out there who is out there that we can see frank arneson is out there who is a very very good director of football do we have a director of football director of football i mean it's not telling me it would replace anyone so let's go and get a frank arneson um <laughs> Paul Mitchell. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He's... Oh, maybe he, maybe I prefer him. Maybe I prefer him to Frank Arneson. Oh, 
That's interesting. We've got a 50-year-old really high-rated fitness coach. You can join. That is, uh, yeah, un under 18s. Hell no, you're going to be doing the first team, mate. Fitness coach. Yeah, we'll give you a little pay rise because you're going to be doing the first team. That's totally fine. Uh, we're looking for names here, people. We're looking for names now. Thomas Helveg for the uh, older generation amongst you there. Thomas Helveg, coach at OB at the moment. Dario Cerna, director of football at Shakhtar. That makes sense. Jordi Cruyff as an unemployed manager. Wanted as well by some people. He is a scout or a director of football, head performance analyst. I mean, he looks really good. What do we... I mean, he wants to be a scout. Yeah, no, they're going to definitely pay compensation for you, though. Right, Roy Keane didn't want to come, but maybe Yap Stam will. He wants to be a coach. Yap Stam, in you come. Yeah. Stuart Pearce is available. This is this is awesome. I'm absolutely loving this. I'm just... Frank Lampard. Oh, my God. Do you want to be a coach? Yes, he's happy to be a coach. We're just amassing a backroom staff of ex-world-class players, other than Stuart Pearce. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to find Christian Vieri, but I found his brother. Do we bring his brother in as a coach to try and get the Vieri name back at Fiorentina? Okay, I got distracted and I found myself stumbling on Jesse Lingard. Not sure if that's a good thing or not. Someone that could be useful is Marco Benessi as a free agent. Really good off the ball and teamwork. Could give us a little bit of depth in in central midfield. I know we've got a few people there, but Italian. Used to play for Fiorentina. Two stints at Fiorentina. 28 years old. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, we once spent £11.5 million on him. But anyway, I think that's enough looking around for this first episode. An introduction to Fiorentina and a little look at FM24. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. If you've enjoyed it, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new. And uh, we'll be getting into some gameplay in the next episode as well. Because uh, I'm excited by that. We'll probably play through pre-season, come back and do a review of who we've signed, who we've sold, what the tactic looks like, uh, and talk you through how it's going to be working. But thank you so much for watching. If I find anything the long way, I'll remember to screenshot it and flash it up on the screen. Um, I'll catch you in the next one. And I'm looking forward to playing FM24. As I said, this is just the beta save. There is a main save coming to the channel when the full game is released. And I'm very excited by that because it's going to involve you guys a lot. So if you like being involved in a YouTube save um, and your opinions really counting and really making a difference then subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment that just says you're damn excited about my main save. But thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.